Galloway is an engineer, master carpenter, and a complete construction expert, serving Missouri and Illinois for more than 40 years. And now, here is About the House with Troy Galloway. Hello, folks. This is Troy Galloway. I am bringing you a brand new show. It's called About the House. I'm really super excited about this show. It's going to be a very unique format. Uh, it's where we're focusing on is it's going to be educational. It's going to be fun and Everybody, I'm hoping, will enjoy it as much as I'm enjoying doing this opportunity. Uh, we're actually, kind of what we're trying to do is, if you've seen this old house, it's going to be kind of just like that. What we're going to be doing is bringing forwards different topics every week. And so that whenever you go back and you check it out on a podcast or something, you'll be able to specifically target what you're looking for and get as much information as possible. Oh, we're going to be bringing in all kinds kinds of different people uh, and uh, different experts in the field. So, yes, it's Ask the Experts. Uh, I've been in the construction business now for 42 years. I've been a, a building engineer. I've kind of worked my way up just like in the old days. You had to actually go out there and hump the lumber before you could nail the lumber before you could measure the lumber. So that's how I've made my way through. I'm a building engineer through the University of Illinois. I hope that doesn't get me in trouble from the Mizzou folks over here. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't help that. Uh, the Illinois folks will love me. And uh, mas- I also master carpenter through the Illinois Carpenter Union. And I have been a builder, developer, and a remodeler uh, and a construction troubleshooter now for 42 years. So this is all I know. So I, I just love talking about it. And I think that you guys will too. And because I have been in the business for a long time, that's why I know that we don't know everything and thinks the technology and the world changes fast. So we're bringing in the other experts. So that's why we have Ask the Experts. They are the folks that know their industry best of all. And when we get done with this, uh, you're going to probably know more than most general contractors because you're going to be able to go back to the well and continually through the podcast to learn. So I think that will be a lot of fun. I really look forward to that, and uh, I think that you guys will too. So anyway, I'd like to just kind of – I've already told you a little bit about how I got it, you know, my trades and how I got into it. But this is – I'm doing this for my darling bride. Actually, how I got into the construction field I, – I know she's getting red in the face right now as she hears this – is that years ago, she wanted her, – her dad was in construction, and he built a beautiful cabinet for the family. Well, when he passed away, the family wanted – they all got into it, and I felt so bad because she couldn't get it. And so I went out, and I made her something. And then I made her something else. And I really discovered I really like this stuff. Uh, so I just kept going back into the field and back into the field. And, and so if I bore the tar out of you, blame my wife. <laughs> and I'm not going to give her a name because <laughs> it's pretty lonely out there in the doghouse. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of how we got started and, and uh, how my love for this field is. And I hope that you folks love it as much as I do. So uh, today's show was going to be about is that we're going to be talking about uh, different types of inspections. So this is one of the questions, ask the expert questions that I get asked a lot. What is the difference between a municipal uh, occupancy inspection versus a home inspection? Well, that's a great question because a lot of people, honestly, I get called, our office gets called a lot. They want us to come in and do a occupancy inspection. Well, occupancy is from the municipal. They all have their own codes. We're all hearing about some of the different things happening out there with, uh, with the merging of the county and the city. And that's one of the things that they're trying to get squared away. So we all have the same municipal. But the municipals is only for, basically, they're just for 
safety issues. They're not caring if your doors are shutting right. They're not caring if you got something upside down. They want to make sure that you are safe in your home, not that it's been done correctly. Well, a home inspection is a lot more than that. So we're going to kind of go into that as we go further into the show. Uh, so I also wanted to tell you, so some of the people that we're bringing in to as the experts, like I said, I'm sorry I got a little bit ahead of myself here, but some of the folks that we're bringing in here is next week we're going to have a painting expert uh, first choice uh, painting veteran owned company you're going to love this man he's uh, very good at what he does we're also got week after that we're also bringing in which is a very seasonal thing here is uh, bringing in a waterproofing company uh, talking about the different waterproofing systems what you should or shouldn't do we're bringing in electricians we're bringing in security companies we're bringing in smart homes smart homes that kind of is going to be a multifaceted kind of uh, uh, different programs because smart homes is now with electronics uh, all the computer gadgets that can connect your home, but also it's also alternate alternative energy such as solar energy. We're going to be bringing in some people with that. Uh, actually, we're even bringing in an electrical co-op. Uh, they're going to come in and talk about some of the different things happening in the electrical industry world uh, and so and subdivisions and whatnot. So that's all different things we're going to be doing. Uh, going to be bringing in home investors. Uh, we already got some home investors and some real estate clubs already signed up, ready to come in here. So in the next uh, few weeks, they'll be coming in, and they're going to talk about what it is for, you know, we have a lot of people out here today, they're buying and selling homes, and they're, they're making a pretty good little bit of money about it. So this is a great way of being able to learn more about what's happening. We're going to be bringing in real estate agents, uh, talking about the industry out there. So this is not ju- this is going to be about construction. It's going to be about building, and it's going to be about your everything about the homes and your building that you live in. Uh, so that's why I say we're going to have a lot of different – It's going actually, the, the podcast – look at it like this. The podcast are going to be like a library we can go back to. So anyway, I think that's going to be a whole lot of fun, and I hope that everybody kind of enjoys that. And so we're, we're going to also – Let's see here. Uh, Look, sorry, this is our very first show. So if I stumble just a little bit, it won't be any different than the rest of the shows. (laughs) But at least I have an excuse. (laughs) So anyway, so how are we going to ask the experts questions? I want to talk about that just for a little bit. So right, take a moment, get a pen and paper, and write this down, and or just listen to the show again. And that is go to. Galloway Building Services, and that is our Facebook page. That's G-A-L-L-O-W-A-Y. That's my company. And uh, go there. There's a place that you can ask and ask questions. And then when we come uh, to the show, we're going to try to focus upon some of the things that you're looking for. So everybody start thinking, what are we going to ask the painters? You know, we're going into that season, so that's very important. And that's what we're going to talk about with the home inspections, too, as we go a little bit further along. uh, It's what we're going to – what do home inspectors look for? Because honestly, painting isn't one of them. That's a cosmetic feature. It really doesn't have any function on the home. So it's really important that you kind of know the good from the bad of what's happening out there. And, you know – I have to tell a real quick painting story. I'll tell this again another time. But this so years ago, I was working on a job. My boss asked me to stay late. He said, "Would you help me paint this bathroom, Troy?" I said, "I, I said, Bill, I, I just can't. I just can't see real colorblind a little bit. I can't really tell. I'm not a good painter." He said, "Oh, don't worry about it. It'll be all right." He says, "Just paint this up." So we did, and I, I stayed late and I painted it. So I get there the next uh, morning, and and uh, Bill, he's a he's an awesome fellow. He's in there the next morning, and he's painting that ba- bathroom. I said, well, "What's wrong?" He said, well, <laughs> "He said you sure ain't no painter." <laughs> so that's been my excuse. I don't paint. But I know the professionals that do, and the old adage, a little putty, a little paint, makes a carpenter what he ate. So that remember that when the painter comes and when you're asking your questions. So anyway, we're going to be going to the next segment here pretty quickly, and we're going to be going in and talk about what to expect in a home inspection. Uh, so as that you 
will not be surprised at what you get or you don't get or what you don't want. Also, we're going to tell you how to separate the wheat from the chaff, the poor inspectors from a good inspector. We're going to be able to help you be able to know, uh, not have your expectations in the wrong direction and know that if somebody's doing more or less than what's supposed to be done. Well, folks, I thank you. I look forward to our next segment. Jump on board with us just a little bit. Uh, This is About the House with Troy Galloway, Galloway Building Services. Sponsored by Troy Galloway and Galloway Building Services, your top choice for professional home inspections in the St. Louis area. GallowayBuildingServices.com. Welcome back, folks. This is Troy Galloway with About the House, and we are going to go into the next segment of what to expect in a home inspection. And again, Feel free to always reach out to us on our Galloway Building Facebook page. That's Galloway Building Services. Uh, so as that you have any other questions. So even if we don't get the question, sometimes what happens is, is that we have questions. We don't even know what the question is until we get some information. And that pops up a bunch of ideas and questions. So just feel free to give us a holler. And uh, I guarantee you myself or somebody will get back with you in the office and answer whatever you want. Uh, after 42 years of being in the construction industry. Uh, there's not much we haven't found or experienced, and uh, we have always have worked with a lot of great people, so they'll be able to absolutely help whatever questions. If I can't answer it, they can. So but anyway, let's get into it right away here, and what to expect in a home inspection. Now, St. Louis is very big into ASHI. Uh, they like the ASHI inspections, and the reason that they do, now ASHI, what does that stand for? American Society of Home Inspectors. And and so, and the reason that real estate agents like that, it's because it's a format that they can somewhat expect to know what they're going to get when they get the inspection. Now, you will find some of the inspections are above and beyond the ASHI format, and they are like the sewer lateral inspection, uh, radon inspection, which actually we got sewer lateral people, experts coming in. We got radon people coming in. You're going to love this stuff. And you're going to also, you have the mechanicals and different kinds of inspections, you know, hazardous waste and stuff. That's not part of the ASHI, but you could Google ASHI and you'll get everything you're expecting. But what we do find is sometimes that the inspectors might not necessarily be really good at what they're doing and so they add a lot of non informational kind of things in it not important kind of things uh so but this is i if there's a tip this is what i teach in our college classes if there is a tip right here that i could that can help you make sure you don't get a stupid inspection remember this you go and you only accept, you tell your agents this, I only accept a home inspection, ASHI format, under the ASHI standards and practices. Now, you can give a call us or, or Google us or, or email us and we will get you that. Or you can go to ASHI itself. It's free information to get that. And that will help you so you don't get the craziness the poor agents out there you got to i mean they're scared to death because they never know if they're going to get a good inspector or a, or an inspector that doesn't know what he's doing and makes up stuff so this helps everybody right there so that is a great way to get started That's, if there's a tip that i got today that is the tip but some of the things that you want to be looking for so when you, you, you that you're going to be getting when your home inspection and uh, you know everybody's got their own way of doing it but i like to start from the outside work my way in and one of the first things that we want to start looking for is kind of like drainage issues, landscaping issues. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, what happens is is that you want to make sure the water stays away. You got to make sure you got proper drainage. You got to make sure that the gutters are going in the right way. Uh, the water's flowing away from the house. Uh, we have a lot of different types of soil in the St. Louis region. And I say region, I mean all the way from Columbia. I mean, the state of Missouri in particular uh, has got, but right around here, we got clay, we got rock, we even got sands uh, that are, we call them Grover sands, uh, that just wild things happen. Uh, so at, I'll tell you a real quick story here. Uh, so we just looked at one here. Uh, the, 
Oh, actually, we actually helped the people. Uh, and I normally don't jump in and help, but I had to. I felt so sorry for these folks. They're probably listening to us today and a really sweet young couple. And uh, what happened was is the water was draining back into their home. So when it come out, every time the sump pump turned down, it just rained. Water went right back down under the foundation. And every time that it rained, the water went right back. So they was actually just double feeding themselves uh the problem and they had what we called well we actually we called a soil engineer in and a structural engineer and i'm a building engineer so all three of us put this figured this out and what happened was is literally the water was getting underneath this house and heaved the basement floor two and three quarters of an inches now the building inspector when he got it he just missed that he should have i don't know how he didn't trip over it uh but nevertheless that's a so that's how important it is for the landscaping and your drainage to be taken care of so we would you want to make sure you got splash blocks drainage this is all going to be part of your inspection and then you want to look at the siding uh, you know, the siding is going to be very important also. You know, we got all kinds of different siding. Siding actually from brick to metal to vinyl to uh, hardy board, which is a great product also. And you want to make sure that this is all installed so as it's keeping the water out of the house. Uh, you get like on your brick, you're going to find that if you got mortar uh, that needs tuck pointed, that's literally letting water into your home. Here's something that's happening out there a lot, too. Actually, we're going to have more than one series on home inspections because I can't teach this or give all of this in just a little bit of an hour, uh, especially when I give full classes on this. So we're going to just kind of do – we're going to be doing a lot of this. But literally – so brick is a very porous material. And what happens is, and we're getting a lot of these houses down the city where they're ripping off the plaster off the wall, and then you put a beautiful picture on that wall, well, that brick will, can literally suck that water right on through and destroy your pictures. So the secret there is, is you just seal the inside brick, make it waterproof. And actually, Masons will tell you uh, that you'll want to also seal the outside if you ever never want to tuck point again. But that's kind of getting off the subject. We'll talk more about that with other segments. But you want to make sure that your brick is all tight. Make sure your siding's good. Your hardy board is, is, is not draining backwards or having any kind of leakage issues. Uh, they actually hardy board. If you ever have a, an inspector that calls on a hardy board and says, a problem go to hardy board's website they'll give you the list of all the information you can actually learn uh what it is that to expect and not expect so you could be firsthand we inspect inspectors all the time when they call stuff that's you know incorrect so just that's why we want to uh, be there for you know we make sure that we do the same thing if i tell you that'll save you that much time we get up on the roof well the roof and <laughs> i guarantee you it's rare that a roofer when he looks at a roof doesn't see a roofing problem that needs to be fixed why it's because that's how they make their money so they're absolutely always going to find things uh there's some good roofing companies that are very legitimate because they know if they're on the level with you that you're going to call them first because they was straight with you and didn't necessarily take your money uh, but what you're looking up on the roof and that's what their your inspector's supposed to be looking for he's supposed to be looking at the flashing the flashing is the part that goes between the roof and the house keeps that water from draining into it uh they're looking at the flashing up underneath uh, your stack pipes your stack pipes is your sewer pipe uh we're going to be talking all about this stuff in future uh, segments uh you want to make sure the flashing around the chimney is all tight that's one of our hot ones right there uh if you don't have the chimney is such a big place coming up it's a huge hole in the roof and that's a bad spot to help bring in uh, more water issues so you want to make sure you do that uh so also you want to look at your doors they look at your doors uh, make sure they're all tight make sure there's no water issues uh we got some great guys coming in talking about that too in the future about how to take care of flash all of that uh so you want they'll be looking at that uh okay this is well. This is going to move on here to that's another segment we want to talk about in the future. The EPA hazardous waste rules. Home inspectors do not get into that. We did talk about that just a few minutes ago about some of the different types of inspections. So if you want to have a hazardous waste inspection, 
uh, then you ask for that specifically for what it is. But they will bring up if there's any kind of particular problems. So that is absolutely something you want to make sure that you do. And they talk about windows. We go into windows and and uh, what to look for with that, uh, broken seals and whatnot, you know. And uh, so if it's working right, you know, there's a like I said, we're never going to get all of this in in just a few minutes here. Uh, but these are just kind of a real quick, brief outline. There's when Galloway Building Services when we do an inspection, there's 700 plus items that we're looking at. So you can see that it's going to be a possible well folks it's possible to actually talk about it all at one time but folks thank you very much i really enjoyed doing this segment with you stay tuned we're coming right back this is troy galloway about the house owner of galloway building services again check us out on our facebook uh, check us out on youtube we have tons of great videos great information nothing but to help you with your property Hello, folks. Thank you for coming back. Uh, this is Troy Galloway with About the House, and we are I'm uh, Galloway Building Services. Uh, we are going to go into a questions as a segment of Ask the Expert. Like I said, on the other ones, you go back, hit it up for next week's painting. Another one's coming in will be about waterproofing. But this one here, I get asked this question all the time. And we talked about it briefly at the beginning of the show, but I kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about it now. Uh, it kind of be in a little bit more detail. So a municipal inspection is basically it is your occupancy inspection. And whatever municipal city or county that's in charge of that jurisdiction will be coming in to do their own code inspections. That also includes they have the, a lot of our different districts also have a fire uh, inspection and the fire department comes in and they check out their things also. This is not part of the home inspection uh, and home inspectors cannot do a municipal. It don't let them tell you that they can because you'll just be spending hundreds of dollars or th- up to thousands of dollars for something that the, the county or the cities will not accept. Now, they're pretty wild, these municipal inspections, because they're all over the place. You can actually get the same county or city, and the guy comes in, says one thing, another guy comes in and says another. So, but, you know, they're the government, so you're going to have to kind of go along with whatever they say. Normally, how your agents will put this in here, so as to help protect you with that, is that all occupancy or municipal inspections, if there's any issues on the home, that the seller will pay for that. That's normally how the buyer's agents will write that up. So, don't worry if if your home inspector, you think he should catch something, but it's not part of the ASHI standards and practices. So what are they looking for? Well, you know, the municipal, they're looking for things like, and these are important things, same with the fire district. They're making sure that you got your GFCIs. Well, that's kind of going back and forth, so so will be your uh, home inspector. They're also checking uh, smoke detectors. They're making sure that you have uh, carbon monoxide detectors. Uh, some of these safety issues, the uh, building inspector will pick up, uh, but they also pick up s- things like what type of sewer lines or water lines or supply lines that they accept or don't accept. You know, they'll even come in to say such things like on some areas, municipal inspections will talk about you got to have an oven hood well you don't have an oven hood a home inspector is not going to say you have to and he's not going to say that it's you know that it has to be vented a certain way or not where a municipal will because that's their what they need to do uh also you know so anytime where they actually overlap is safety issues that are absolute, like a GFCI. That's a ground fault interrupter. That's your electrical. That's your little button on your kitchen and your bathroom that's on the outlet that goes out. You hit the button and reset it. That's to make sure that you don't electrocute yourself, uh, or at least hope you don't. And uh, so they're both be checking that. Also, too, your, uh, your municipal inspectors, they actually will be checking, like, for cracks in the driveway and et cetera, et cetera. But it mostly, and they love cosmetics. 
this is something that a home inspector is not to be checking out. He's not a cosmetic inspector. If you have, you know, if you got paint peeling, he'll mention that you got paint peeling. Uh, but uh, municipal will. Municipal inspections, the big thing with them is that they want to make sure Honestly, they want to make sure that you keep your they keep the property values up, and if they keep all of the pro- homes in the area, you know, to a, a good standard, that helps all of us. Where the building inspector now he's kind of he's looking at things they're not looking at. He's going to be looking at is my hot water heater working? Is my furnace working? Do I have any kind of issues in the furnace system uh, that's going to cause me any trouble? Uh, is it going to a floor joist? If you got any problems with that, well, your municipal inspector is never going to look at any structure like that. Now, now I can't say never because if he sees something so blatant, you know, I've saw one time that they'd actually cut out uh, more on a floor joist than what was legally acceptable. So they called it because it was a safety issue, but it was pretty blatant. They, they only spend 15, 20 minutes in a home where a home inspector is going to be anywhere from two to four hours, depending on how, you know, the condition of the home. So that's kind of what you're looking for, the difference between a municipal and a home inspection. And like I said, you want to make sure that you get – if some municipality, some municipalities do not need it, you want to make double sure. Not all agents know whether you're supposed to or not. So uh, why don't you just kind of just take that on your own and call up your town or your fire department in your area and ask them, do I have to have an occupancy? Because I have, ooh, I have seen in the past uh, that people have moved into a home and had not – had your occupancy, and that is against the law. We'll talk about that as another story here, uh, but that it can get you kicked out of your home. So just double double check and make sure. You know, uh, sometimes agents are, they they do great work, but sometimes they just get really really busy, and tiny little things like that slip. So, but anyway, I hope that's been informational for you. Galloway Building Services. This is about the house with Troy Galloway. <laughs> Hello, folks. This is Troy Galloway with About the House and with Galloway Building Services. And we are back and we are bringing up a seasonal tip. We're going to try to always do a couple of Ask the Expert segment and a seasonal tips. Uh, they want to make sure that we're kind of focusing upon what's happening to us at this time. And so I want this. Is, of course, this is April. April showers bring May flowers, but it also brings a lot of water in the basement. Uh, the waterproofing guys in this town right now are just swamped. Uh, and uh, but So we want to talk about how maybe you don't have to first call them in, how you could possibly do some things to help yourself. And so that's what this seasonal tip in this particular situations are, water in the basement. So we kind of briefly talked about that earlier in the, uh, uh, when we was talking about what to expect in home inspections. But so... What we want to talk about here is waterproofing the water. So think about this. You got a basement that's sitting in the ground. Your basement in the ground is nothing but a glorified well. For some of you folks my age, it actually had wells at one time. Just think you dig a hole in it, what happens? Water gets into it. Well, it's the same thing happening to your basement. So you want to, these are what we're going to try to do to keep that water out of your basement because we don't want a well. So, in St. Louis, not all air people have sump pits and pumps in their home. A sump pump and pit. The pump, the pit actually is in a corner of the basement. Now, all new homes for the last 20 plus years, it's been pretty much code everywhere that you have to have a pit in the house. But you don't have to have the pump, but you got to have the pit. So they want you to be prepared because that is a hole in deeper than the rest of it, uh, than your basement. And what we're trying to do is to collect that water. Water is always going to go to the easiest source. Uh, it's going a weakest source, and uh, and that is going right into our sump pit. And actually, our drainage around the home, our interior, exterior waterproofing systems are designed to literally go back into our sump pit. And then the pump then pumps it out. So we'll stay with that for a second here. So when our sump pump 
when your sump pump comes up and out of the house. I want you to make sure that that actually is discharged away from the home two to three foot. If not, that water just drains right back down to the basement. Hopefully, our underground water system does put it back into the pump, but why would overtax it? So that's the first that one of the things that you want to make sure. Want to make sure that your pump is actually working right. So just reach down there. There's a little float on most of them, and sometimes it's internal. Uh, sometimes, but most of the time it's an external float. Reach down there and lift that up. Make sure that it's operating correctly. Uh, and you'll know when it kicks on. Uh, I just looked at one yesterday, and it was working fine, except it had a loose connection. So every time the pump turned on, water went everywhere. So it wasn't getting up and out of the house at, uh, at uh, gallons per minute that you was hoping. So anyway, that you want to make sure for that. Also, I wanted you to go outside, look around the house. I want to make sure all your downspouts and uh, everything, which we briefly talked about, get that, make sure that's all flowing away, two to three foot away from the house, minimum. You can go more, depending on the slope or the degrade of the home. Also, look at your ground dirt around your perimeter of your home. You're not supposed to have the dirt up on top of the wood. We'll talk about that in another set, another series. Uh, but you want to have that water so it actually floats away, uh, sheds away from the home. So you want a little bit of a hump up around the house, hill, and have that drain away. These are ways that you're going to help yourself before you have to call that waterproofing guy in here. Uh, you want to make sure these things are done. Make sure that your gutters, if you have gutters on your home, that they're clear. Now, <laughs> I say that, and I'm just as guilty as everybody else. I don't get up there and get them gutters cleaned as much as as, and as regularly as I should, but I sure can tell when I don't because that water is overfilling and coming right, not going to where it's supposed to be and running right back down onto the house. Uh, and uh, if you get like, well, I was working down in Kentucky there for several years uh, doing work, and we worked up here, our company, actually, we work over the throughout the Midwest, but uh, literally at Kentucky area we was working in, they have their soffits, that's your overhang, is over two foot. They like the big ones because it actually helps them with shading, helps to cut down their cooling bill, heating bills. So anyway, with that being said, we'll talk about that another time. But you want to make, they don't have to worry about it because that water runs off that roof. They don't have gutters. That helps that water get away from the house. Very few folks down there ever had gutters because that wasn't a problem. You want to make sure, too, that you don't have any trees up against the house. Them roots will literally get in there and cause structural damage, crackage. You know, they're going to go to where the water is at, naturally. You know, they're going to go to the food source. And so they're going to go up against the house. They're going to cause issues right there. So these are all, there's a hot one right here. Once you remember this one, because this happens a lot. We have our patios, concrete patios, and our sidewalks around the home. They've had some settling. And we'll talk about that, why that's settling in another, t- another time. But, uh, and we talk about new home construction, but the settling going around the house. So naturally the sidewalks and the patios drain back towards the house. Well, you can imagine, you know, it's not getting any kind, it's not absorbing into the ground. It's just going right back. So you're literally funneling this water back into it. So these are different places that you want to make sure. A lot of times we've gotten settling around the house where the downspouts are just just dumping right there and you got holes around there so they'll make sure that that's taken care oh before this segment wraps up so everybody with underground drains i want you to take a garden hose out there right now uh and when you can this weekend's beautiful weekend you could get wet put them down in that your, your underground drain uh, this, and then p- fill it up see if it backs up make sure it exits we got rabbits we got other varmints and such that get upside of our our drain tile and clog them up you think it's working right you're not going to be out there checking when it's wet so do that anyway i hope that's been helpful this is troy galloway with about the house and with galloway building services Hello, folks. We are back. Uh, this is our final segment of the very first show. I'm so excited to be able to do this. This is About the House with Troy Galloway, uh, Galloway Building Services. And uh, I really have had a great – enjoyed this. Uh, I'm working with some fabulous people here at Salem Broadcasting at the, at the Answer. And I've re- and I got a great fellow here. I already told him I was going to embarrass him, Joey, and he's helping me. Uh, and uh, he's giving me the hand signals. I'm not quite understanding what some of that stuff means. <laughs> (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, maybe I don't want to. But anyway, uh, next week's program, I'm bringing in what we spoke up earlier. I'm uh, going to bring in my good friend, Rue, uh, First Choice Painting, a veteran-owned company. And we're going to be focused because painting is a big, big field. But what we're going to be focusing on is exterior because this is the time of the year that we're trying to, well, face it, the wife's been on to you all winter long. Got to get this place taken care of. Got to get it cleaned up well. So now you're going to get the painter in there. And there's a lot of good painters out there. And there's a lot of guys that have a paintbrush that call themselves painters. So what we're going to hopefully we're going to do is when we get right, you'll know when you get done with Rue, we're going to learn all kinds of different great tips and what to watch for and how to take care. Uh, but we're going to be talking about uh, exterior painting, prepping of the home, expectations, how, what do you do, you know, stuff that you wouldn't even think of, like, what do I do with my pets? You know, uh, do I, you know, work in, if they got to go outside or during the daytime or in working hours, things like that. We're going to also be talking about ceiling. Painting also goes into ceiling of decks. Uh, so, which is absolutely, you know, people talk about some of these treated decks are treated. Well, they also need sealed too. So we're going to talk about different products that Rue believes that works best. Uh, also, you know, want to make sure they're going to talk about how when they show up, what do you expect? Where they park, all kinds of all kinds of things. Not just about painting, but about what to work, how you're going to deal with the contractor to make sure it best works. Also, too, you want to, we're going to talk a little bit about the colors, uh, how you can cover up a color or, or get rid of a color. Uh, you know, because if you got a really dark house, it's not going to be real easy to get ahead and get it white or a light color. Sometimes you got damaged material that are not going to take the wood or the paint uh, on the wood or the siding. The way that it would if it was new and some of the things that you may have to do to get it painted. So we want to talk about that. Uh, that's going to be very educational. Also, too, something I want to share with you here. This is something that's very, very important. And uh, we do have some RRP rules and regulations. This is the EPA rules on lead paint. And so this is every pre-1978 homes. I don't care if you have lead or if you don't have lead. There is a system that is to be followed. It's up to a 30000 plus fine a day fine. So it's very important. Because it doesn't take – we'll talk about, about this here in other segments too. I am lead certified, and uh, but a little bit of lead can literally – it could mentally retard your children – it could kill your little dogs. It could kill animals. So you want to make sure that they follow the rules. If you have ever any questions, I know it's a quite a bit to that. Uh, you can always pull it up on your Google it, RRP. Uh, it'll talk about uh, EPA rules in red. Uh, this also goes on the inside of the home. So we're going to be talking about that with other segments too. Uh, and you're going to hear me talk a lot about that because – if you're a person of childbearing age, you know, you're not going to – you don't want to have any kind of possible problems. So I want to – that's a that's a big one there. We will be having several segments on that. And But anyway, we're going to have a great time next week. Everybody's going to love it. Thank you so much for listening to our program. This is About the House with Troy Galloway and Galloway Building Services. And thank you, folks. God bless you. Bye, bye.